Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club, and we got a special guest in the building. That's right. Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. That's right. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. Charlemagne. Yes. Put the book down right fast. Why? Spell Schwarzenegger. I just want to see if you can. S C H W A R Z E N E G G E R. Wow. Oh, wow. What you talking about? Okay, well, excuse me. Well, welcome. Yes. Thank you. She's got a new children's book called Good Night Sister. Good Night Sister. What is this book about? It's about sisterhood. I wrote it based off the relationship I have with my sister, Christina. She's younger than me, okay. always does everything first, and especially growing up. So I wanted to write a book just honoring that relationship for, for little ones. Well, you I have, have four jealous... daughters. So I'm... You have four daughters. Four. Oh, my gosh. I have four daughters. Where do you fall? God bless you. I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Oh, yes. Okay. What kind of responsibility comes with that? Everything. <laughs> do you feel like a third parent? Um, growing up for sure, but mm -hmm. I like to constantly remind my siblings that I'm the oldest, even though we're all adults, just okay. because I'm, you know, the one that will be making sure everybody does what they're supposed to do. Got you. <laughs> I was asking, were you ever jealous? You know, cause you know, when the, when the babies are young, the parents cater more mm -hmm. to the baby, the yeah. older kids kind of just get left out a little bit. Did that ever make you feel away growing up? No. Cause I'm eight years older than my youngest brother, Christopher. And for me, he was like my baby. Mm. And I just loved that. Like I, I've always wanted to be a mom. So to have my two daughters and be able to talk about this subject is so special for me. Mm -hmm. And I just loved it. I never was jealous of that. He's still definitely the baby of our family and treated like that for sure. My Does he dad, still call you all the time? And All the time. I mean, we talk to each other. The four of us kids talk to each other multiple times a day. All the, I brought my mom and my sister to New York here with me to watch my girls. So we do everything as a family. We're very, very tight, very close. Is it a group chat thing? Oh, major group chat. Major <laughs> group chat and also big group FaceTimes okay. that we do. We're a big FaceTime family. So especially with my two little girls, they love seeing everybody on FaceTime. So we try to do that a lot. And, and everybody has stepped into their roles as uncles and gotcha. my parents as grandparents and my sister as an aunt. You know, I'm just figuring out what the group FaceTime is. I used to always <laughs> think those were missed calls. No. Because you know how they come through your phone and says join FaceTime yes, call. And yeah. I always thought they were just missed calls. You're an no, idiot. I just, I'm just realizing, like, oh, if I click on it, yeah. then it'll... But you, yeah. you'll click on it, and then you never really know how many people, people are, are actually on. a yes. part of it. Got you. And so you can see one person, or you would see, you know, everybody, Does all it, the but, members. The only problem with FaceTime I have is it kills the effect of actually going to see somebody because I might not see my mother because I'm like, oh, I just FaceTime it because it almost feels like they're Oh, yeah, there. no, we definitely still see each other. Still okay, oh, right. yeah, yeah, definitely see each other in person. Everybody has, like, decided what activity for my daughter is that they want to be in charge of. So if it's a music class or if it's, you know, a going to the park or just even to Sunday dinner, we everybody goes to my mom's house on Sundays. So we spend a ton of time together. Anyway, so, so, yeah. well, when did you know you wanted to write a children's book? Like it's one thing to be inspired, but yeah. when did you know you actually wanted to do it? Well, just writing in general. I've always loved writing. I was a big, you know, a person who would journal when I was younger and I've always found it to be really therapeutic mm -hmm. and um, writing children's books for me especially now that I'm a mom. I wrote a children's book before I became a parent and that was a totally different experience. And now that I actually sit and read so much at night with my daughters, it's you really know all about like what works, what doesn't work, what they like in pictures, what they gravitate towards, especially little girls. So it's been um, an eye-opening experience and it was really fun. I started writing it right when I had my first daughter, Lila, and now I'm back in New York with her. She's two and a half. So it takes a little bit of time, <laughs> but it's really fun. Yeah, one of my favorite things is just watching my, you know, uh, daughters, because my last three daughters are all three years apart. Oh, wow. So they have like like a really, 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 really close bond. So how, yeah, how important beautiful. is it for you to have your daughters have that type of bond? It's, I mean, it's so important. My sister, Christina, and I are so close. We're 19 months apart and we... We're really close growing up, and then especially now as adults, we do everything together. We talk so much every single day. It's like the first person that we call every single morning is each other. And it's just the greatest gift to have that in a sister or in a sibling. And if you don't have a sibling, to be able to have that in a friend or a cousin. My mom always talked to Christina and I growing up that she didn't have a sister growing up, so she had that in her cousins. She was able to have that close relationship. And I think just nurturing that closeness with somebody at a young age to be able to have somebody that you can turn to when you need support or when you need a hug or when you need to feel brave is such a gift to give to children. And so to watch that dynamic already forming with my two daughters at such a young age, my youngest is eight months old. So just to see, mm -hmm. you know, them already be so close and like squeeze each other out of joy is really sweet. Now, how was uh, how was your dad as a grandfather? 
you know, because he's the Terminator. Yeah, he so is. So how was the Terminator as a grandfather? You well, know, and how was, was he with you growing up? I mean, he was he was such an amazing dad. He was, you know, and still is such an amazing dad to the four of us kids and just, you know, has so much fun with little kids and all the stuff that they like to do. So for him, I feel like, especially this time, my daughter's two and a half, my oldest one. So he's having a lot of fun stepping into the playful role. Mm -hmm. We call him Opa. So he is, you know, always loves having them come over. Definitely likes to go give her cookies and take her to, you know, all around his house doing fun little things and also start showing her chores already, which I'm like, she's so young. Dad. She's too, Dad. <laughs> Chill out. Yeah, but he has a lot of fun with it. He's great. And my mom absolutely loves it. She definitely takes on the responsibility of going to do activities with her um, and doing the tea parties, you know, doing the whole thing. How were you dating with, with the Terminator as your dad, with Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> like, how was, was that dating? Like, you know, how, how do you pull up to the house with a guy and, and he walks out like, because you got to be scared, you know? I mean, I feel like people would think to be scared of my dad, but growing up, especially when I was in high school, my dad was governor at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was definitely, um, people would think that that's the person to be scared of, but I feel like the person to really keep your act together with would be my mom. Your mom was the one to put things Yeah, together. she would just, nothing gets by my mom, you know? So she just really, you know, when when people would come over, if it was, you know, a boyfriend or if it was any of my girlfriends, it was just like, you know, my mom. So she was the real Terminator. Eye. She was the <laughs> <Exactly>. real Terminator. <laughs> Do governor's kids, governor's kids gotta have security, right? When, yeah. Damn, so how was that in high school? You couldn't be regular? And definitely, definitely no guys were trying to approach you in high school. <laughs> you couldn't sneak off and do anything. Jesus. I know. It was always like a, it was a really funny thing that also was not uh, told to us beforehand. So that was always mm -hmm. like a funny thing that all of a sudden there was just somebody in high school that would be at our school that was starting to show up at, you know, a bunch of different places. And so I, I remember finally coming to my mom and I was like, I think somebody's at our school that's not supposed to be at our school. And then we were told that we have security with us, but they're the best. I mean, they're also still the CHP officers that we were assigned when, when we were um, younger are still in our lives today. We became such a family with them because, you know, you spend seven and a half years with somebody around your family. And also, especially as you're growing up, they become such a huge part of your life and your family. So even when I come out with a book now, all of them will still text me. They'll, mm -hmm. you know, so we're really close with all of them. And it's such a huge gift. Did you ever uh, ditch them one time? Like, 100%. <laughs> what did you Especially ditch them for? Especially when I learned to drive. Just to like have the freedom of, you know, wanting to be like a kid in high school. I also was like, that was my version of rebellion. I was too scared to do anything else. So um, I think that that like for me was my version of being like, oh, I'm going to do something daring. So, but they, they were awesome and um, and they still are today. So have you ever ditched them and regretted it? Like, oh shoot, I need them. <laughs> I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> I mean, I remember going to college and I made this whole argument about how like now I needed to be on my own and mm -hmm. I needed to just not have them with me. And I'm 18 now. And then I actually went to college and I, I went to USC and I was like, I wish I actually had them <laughs> down with me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they were great. They were super friendly. I love that you use the last name because all I got is daughters. So I want like my daughters to have our last name and, you know, whatever name they get married to my wife right. does that too like she, yeah my she mom did both. that yeah so that's I, I i love that but is, is the name ever has the name been more of a blessing or burden growing up we we never really used our last name so we went by s always oh, wow. because you know the last name schwarzenegger is not a common one so yeah. <laughs> and that never fit on a scantron as a kid right <laughs> no. it never, it never fit. i mean when you did like the sats it just took forever i feel like i should have <laughs> been given extra time but it we went by s and my parents did a really great job at allowing us to have as private of an upbringing as possible and also as normal of an upbringing as possible and that was you know in part by not having us use our last name for everything so mm -hmm. we just went by you know Catherine s and my siblings the same so it allowed for us to have a lot of normalcy growing up and um and then as i've gotten older and started you know to carve my own path and do my own thing and and write books and and also just be my own person being able to get married and also just add a new name to that is important because you know it's all part of my. Have you ever life. been talking to a black person and said your name, and then the black person said, "What'd you call me?" <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Swartz, nigga, you stupid, yo. He is, you are stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> Goodness gracious. No. Now, now, when it, <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to the book Good Night System, do you think that there's parenting tactics we can use to bring siblings together, or is that just something that has to naturally happen? There's for sure. I think that. I mean, I ask my mom this all the time, just because it's so important to my husband and I to be able to have our kids be really close and have that important bond. My mom, for me growing up, my parents always talked to us about the importance of having a great relationship with your siblings and 
being close to them and knowing that they are going to have an experience with you growing up that's unlike anyone else. And that that's such a vital relationship to nurture and to work at, especially as you get older. Because as you get older, Mm -hmm. staying close to your siblings can be a lot harder than it was when you were younger. You have Mm -hmm. to make an effort. You have to actually put in a lot of work to stay close, to be in each other's lives. And it's the best kind of work for all of us. And we were all on the same page about that and also watched my mom have that close bond with her four brothers growing up. So she really walked the walk. And I think Mm -hmm. that helps as a parent to be able to show your children you know, lead by example and show them how close you are with your siblings. And, you know, hopefully they'll learn from that. I was going to ask, you know, growing up, a lot of parents like to be friends with their kids. Mm -hmm. So were your parents like friends, BFFs with you? And how will you be with your kids growing up? My parents, I think, did a great job at allowing us to feel comfortable coming to them for everything. Like Mm -hmm. I remember my mom always said to me, you can come to me for anything, talk to me about anything judgment free and I will be there to give you advice, to help you. And also I'm your mom. So I will, you know, be clear with you on what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, mm-hmm. what the rules are, what your chores are, and making sure that you I raise a, you know, respectful, hardworking, good human being. Mm-hmm. And so that was always something that I thought that she did really well because I would come to her and tell her things that a lot of the times people would be like, You tell your mom those things like I can't believe you tell her stuff like that and I just I felt so comfortable and all of my girlfriends had that same feeling with my mom so they would often come to my mom and tell her things they weren't even telling their own parents Mm, so it was such a special thing for my friends to be able to have that bond with with my mom growing up and it was such a gift to us to be able to feel safe enough and and not judged to be able to come and just say like I'm really struggling with this or what do you think about this and I would sometimes come by my at my house and my girlfriends would be in with my mom in her little office area and talking to her and I'd be like what are you guys talking about without Mm -hmm. me so she she did a really great job just allowing people to feel really comfortable and non non non-judged and also just she does that in life she's such a curious person and she you know gets to the the really intense stuff right away with people and she just has that about her people feel comfortable we'll give you that freedom like we'll give you that freedom to be to know that i can talk to my mom about any and everything i think i just knew that she would love me no matter what i think Mm -hmm. to be able to give that to your children and that feeling of knowing that they will feel loved and accepted no matter what they do what they say what their choices are and and both my parents really provided that feeling for all of us we just all felt really loved by all by both of my parents and and felt comfortable enough to come to them with whatever it was that we were experiencing in life and wanted help with or wanted you know to bounce ideas off of and we still have that today which especially as a parent and a wife now is such a huge gift because I can talk to my mom about what it's like raising two girls what it's like Mm -hmm. writing a children's book and what it's like you know doing all of these things you know as as a parent and as a mother to to two girls, as a wife to someone who has a big career themselves, and so I talk to her about everything, and it's such a gift to have in all phases of life. Now you know I'm, I'm a big Marvel fan, so you know the fact that you're married to Star Lord is <laughs> incredible. But could, could you have ever got with somebody regular because of what you saw growing up because of your parents? Yeah, dynamic? for I'm sure. sure. She dated somebody regular. Yes, I doubt did it. you? Y- yes, of course. Uh-huh. I mean, I think that you <laughs> define regular. First That's a good question. Totally normal in high school relationships. For sure. Like, she, I think she that, didn't go to PS 34, though. <laughs> no, of course. No, no, no. Why would you? But, but go ahead. <laughs> but I think, you know, you grow up in, you know, whatever household or family that you grow up in and you end up falling in love with whoever it is that you will end up with. And for me, it just happened to be somebody that had a similar profession to my own dad. But I think, you know, even if he wasn't an actor, I still would have, you know, fallen in love with him. How did y'all meet? We met in church. Wow. Yeah. So, so he kicked it to values. you in church. Yeah. He kicked it to you in church. After when they were church. passing a collection plate, there was a note in there that said, hey, call me later. Like, how did, y'all, how did he kick it to you in church? No, after church. We actually, I, you know, in church especially, like, I always think, even though my, my grandma isn't here, she's passed away, I always, when I'm in church, I'm like, she's watching me. You gotta mm-hmm. pay attention. So it was definitely after church. I was definitely not going to be, you know, mm-hmm. doing anything like that in church. But yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy. I think it's also special because it's one of the things that, you know, my parents always talk to us about when it came to finding the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with is being able to find somebody who has similar values to you, who mm-hmm. has similar beliefs to you, wants to raise a family similarly to you, and um, has is on the same page as you when it comes to your hopes and dreams in life. And that, 
you know, worked out really well. And it was like on our very first date, we covered everything that I feel like people cover in the first few years of dating. We just wanted to get through everything because we knew we both came into the relationship knowing what we wanted out of a partner. And so to be on the same page about that in the beginning was very important. How does you ask your ladies what that looks like, though? You can't. You said you covered everything in one. We literally like there was no there was nothing that was off topic. What was the first date at? Was it Bible study or was it like a restaurant? No, it was actually neither. We went up to um, we took a road trip on our very first date up to a farm where I keep my horse. And um, see, not regular. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> we not regular. drove, <laughs> we drove there, and it was a very long drive. And I think we both were like, oh, you know, okay. what if we if we don't get along, what will happen? And and if we do get along, you know, what that would that be like? And so we ended up just covering a lot, talking about a lot, and um, it worked out very well. It's got to be amazing, right? Because you got two daughters, so now you actually know how to protect your daughters. Because you grew up in the limelight. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the great benefits that I think my mom gave to us was that she grew up in a family that was, you know, a well-known family. She grew up also. That's an understatement. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she grew up with a lot of, you know, pressures of her own that she experienced. And I think as a mom, she felt like she could give us a lot of advice and also knew what to do and what not to do when it came to raising children that we're also going to experience something similar. So I think definitely for, you know, for Chris and I, it's very important to be able to be aware of that and also aware of how that would affect our kids and giving them the privacy that my parents gave us is very important. Why the title Good Night Sister? Well, I really wanted it to be a bedtime book for Mm -hmm. children. And I just found the bedtime routine as a new mom so beautiful and also so important. And I was so really taken aback by how many memories were flooded to Mm -hmm. me when I would be sitting still with my daughter and reading books as a new mom and just sitting in the rocking chair, not distracted by all the different things going on in life. And I would sit with her and I would read so many of the same books that I read growing up with my siblings and with my sister because we did everything together. And I wanted to write a book that honored the relationship and the bond between sisters like that I had with mine. And um, and just be able to celebrate that relationship in a book that would, you know, get kids thinking about the importance of that and also knowing that even if you're the oldest, that you might need to lean on your younger sibling for support. And that's what I did with Christina growing up. What were your favorite uh, your favorite ch- uh, ch- authors growing up? I mean, I read all of the the same books, which is wild that I'm reading now with my daughter. So just the Good Night Moon book, you know, like so many of the same books that I think are such big and important books now for kids, which is really exciting to think that, you know, somebody would be able to add this book to their evening routine of of books that maybe they read with their kids. He's a Judy Bloom memories. stan. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he just posted a picture of her, uh, him and Judy Bloom like oh, I yesterday. Saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's like the second time you posted that picture. Well, I was actually... <laughs> no. We well, have four daughters, so, you <laughs> yeah, know. Right. Like the third my time oldest daughter doesn't like... Any, you know what's so crazy? She told me she don't like none of the Judy Bloom books, but I think that was just her way of rebelling against me. Because well, you like, want to do something different than your parents. Yes, like, but, oh, if your parent likes it, you can't like it. But why read them all? Like, all I gave her was All You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, but she's read yeah. them all. Super Fudge, Fudge, yeah. Iggy's House, like, mm-hmm. all of them. But I posted that because I had a stack of Judy Bloom books, and I don't know if people realize Judy Bloom is one of the most banned authors of the 20th century. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, sim- simply because she talked about things like sexuality mm-hmm. and, you know, religion and mm-hmm. race. And when she did it in that time, for whatever reason, it was considered controversial blubber. Like they, People think blubber is about bullying. So I, I, I posted a stack of her books, and I really just wanted to repost the picture. With her. <laughs> See, but I posted the picture <laughs> with the stack of books just to, you know, let people know. It was a quote that, that she said that I found. That was about the banning of books that just related to everything that was going on. See, now y'all want to make me pull up the quote. So I don't he's, a, he's a stand, anymore. stand, like fan, no, fan. I, I That's like, amazing. I love Judy Bloom. I oh, mean, the quote was, but it's not just the books under fire now that worry me. It is the books that will never be written, the books that will never be read. And all due to the fear of censorship, as always, young readers will be the real losers. That's a Judy Bloom quote. So that's why I posted that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So is this going to be uh, your only book? Are you going to write more books? Are you going to write... This is my fifth book, my mm-hmm. second children's book. So mm-hmm. I would love to be able to continue to do more. It's such a different experience right. to release a book as a parent now and to and to also release a book that is for children, knowing as much as I know now as a new mom. So it's really special. I hope to be able to continue to do it and um, and bring my girls along. They're they're here with me in New York. So it's 
it's a very different book launch experience than it was the last time, but it's the best. Take them to American Girl. Take them to American Girl. Oh, take them to American Girl. They'll love that. You need a full day for that. Full day for that. My mom's already gone to the park a bunch of times, so. You know, it's is awesome. It, is, is it weird that I had this in my back? Is it, it See, I think it is. Yeah, it is very weird. Yes, it is. Very weird. Yes, it is. Just a little bit. You still reading those books down? When are you going to put your girls on uh, Judy Bloom? They, they're younger now, though, right? Two and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two yeah, and a yeah, half yeah, and eight yeah, months. Yeah, they have yeah, some yeah. time. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you. I know you got to run. We appreciate Thank you for joining you. us. Thank you for Good night, sister. Good night, sister. Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt's out right now. Go get it. Thank you. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. In the morning. The Breakfast Club.